In this video we're going to look at some of the most important date related functions. But before we jump into those functions, let's first remind ourselves of how date formats work in Excel. At the top of my sheet here, I have an illustration of a few different dates expressed in pure numerical terms and then expressed in date format. So first of all we have our beginning of time according to Excel. That means that day zero, the beginning of Excel time, was day zero of January 1900. This would actually in theory be the last day of 1899. We also have today. Today expressed numerically as 41673 is 41,000 days 673 since the beginning of Excel time. That day zero on the 1st of January 1900. And that same date today expressed in date format. Note these numbers are exactly the same. One cell simply references the other. It's just a question of applying date formatting. And finally, let's remind ourselves of how time works in Excel. A 0.5 value represents 0.5 days, which means halfway through the day, or 12 p.m. With that little refresher behind us, let's look at some of these functions. So first of all, the today function. We've already seen this in use up here. The today function is very, very simple. We simply start with the equal sign, write today, open the bracket, and you'll notice Excel is not prompting for any arguments. That's because there are none. We simply have to open and close the brackets to tell Excel we're working with a sheet function. I can now hit enter, and Excel will simply display today's date. Whenever a sheet moves into the next day, you open a sheet, a sheet is recalculated in any way, today's date will be updated. The next three functions are day, month and year. These functions will enable us to pick different elements out of a date. Using the day function, I'll be able to find what day of the month it is within the current month or any other selected month. To use it, I start with the equals as always, type day, open the brackets and then provide the serial number. The serial number is not the serial number is nothing to worry about. Excel is just asking for a date, either in date format or in raw numerical format, which it would refer to as a serial number. In this case, I'm going to point my day towards today's date, close the brackets, and I will see that Excel returns the number 3, because we are currently on the 3rd of February 2014. Similarly, I can use the month function to get the month from a given date. I type the word month, open my brackets and point at the serial number. Simply close the brackets and hit enter. Excel is now telling me that I am in month number 2 or February of 2014. And finally I can extract the year. To do that I type year, open brackets and point at my serial number. Hit enter and I can see that Excel has extracted today's year, 2014. These three functions can be useful in themselves, but they are also useful in supporting the date function. The date function effectively allows us to put a date together based on a day, month and year parameter. So let's see what happens when I start with my equals and type date. As I open the bracket, I am prompted for those three parameters to provide a year, a month and a day. So I'll go ahead and point my year at the year type a comma to move to the next parameter and point at the month, another comma and point at the day. This has effectively taken my day, month, year, put them all back together again and given me today's date. This is a pretty pointless exercise. Where the date formula can become more useful is where we want to restrict or control either the day, the month or the year. For example, I may want a formula that always displays the first day of the month. So I can slightly doctor this formula, find the day parameter, and instead of using whatever today's date is, I can just use 1 to specify I always want to start on the first day of the month. Using such a notation, I could potentially fill across with a formula to provide a resulting row of ever-increasing dates, but that only increase one month at a time. To do that, let's have a look at a quick demonstration. First of all, I'll move across my year, and then I'll provide 
varying months. From here I can now pull across my formula and I will see that I have a date that always displays the first day of the month but the month changes depending on my month row. To keep my sheet from getting too complicated I'm going to delete these excess formula. The next formula in my arsenal of date functions is date value. Date value takes a date stored in a text format and convert it into a serial number. Let's have a look at this cell here. I notice that I have my speech mark at the front and then the words Jan 2014. I can also see the cell is stored as text. If I try and change the format of the cell to something like short date, Excel will not allow me to do that because the cell itself contains a text value. Now, if it was just one single cell, I could just manually retype it but I may have a, an enormous column of these dates an output from a database or some other source so if I need to convert this text date into a numerical date I need to use date value I'll type my date value and point it at the date in terms of text Excel won't let me click on the cell because the tooltip is in the way let's see if we can move it and find a different way to click on that cell no, not to worry this may happen, nothing to worry about. Click on a cell adjacent to the cell you want to click on and then use an arrow key to reach the one that you want to get to. Close my brackets and hit enter. Now I have a date in real date format. I can know this by changing the date into a simple number format. And sure enough it's expressed in date serial format. From here I can now work with it properly using other functions such as day, month and year. Another one of the more helpful date functions is the weekday function. A weekday doesn't tell me the day of the month, rather it tells me the day of the week and it expresses it in a numerical format. Over here I have some dates spanning one week, moving from Monday through to Sunday. Just for proof, I'm going to change the date format so we're all clear on what dates we're using. So let's have a look at how weekday works. So I'll start by typing the equals, write in weekday. I can press tab to autocomplete and open my bracket. From here I need to give Excel the serial number, which to evaluate, and I'll point to my column I and the first row. Now from here I need to tell Excel what the return type will be. The return type just tells Excel how to interpret the weekday. So let's pay attention first to these top three options. I can number Sunday through to Saturday as my numerical values for each day of the week. Or I can number Monday as 1 through to Sunday as 7. And finally I have an option to number them from 0 to 6 rather than from 1 to 7. For me the most natural of these options is to choose number 2. That means Monday will be 1 through to Sunday being 7. Through a quirk of Excel some of these options are repeated. For example 11 is the same as 2 and 17 is the same as 1. For most of our situations we'll just need to look at these top three numbers the 1, 2, 3. For this demonstration I'm going to pick 2 so that Monday is the first day of the week and Sunday is the last. I type my 2 and then close the brackets. I can also simply click on this row here. Finish the bracket and hit enter. From here I can also fill down to see the corresponding weekdays for each one of these dates. Sure enough I have Monday as the first day of the week and Sunday as the last. The weekday functionality is useful for understanding where holidays can occur in a month. If you can examine the weekdays and weekend days you'll then be able to know how many working days you have in that month. The next function we're going to look at is eDate. eDate is useful for incrementing our dates one month at a time. If I wanted to create a list of the current months in this year, I could start by typing two of those months and then using the fill function within Excel, Excel will automatically recognize this pattern and fill down subsequent months. This is a certainly very powerful and handy feature. But I may reach a situation where I want to change the first month from which I start and then I want to run all subsequent months in incrementing values after that. 
So say for example, I want this top date to be dynamic. I might want this to be the first day of the current month, whatever the current month might be. So for example, instead of the 1st of January, I might write here today and close my brackets. Now I need a function that will increment from my point of today. To do that, I can use edate. I type my equals, edate, and open the brackets. I need to give it the source date, the starting point. Then I type my comma to move to the next parameter and tell it how many months to move forward. In this case, one month. You may have situations where you want to look at your data quarterly, so you could choose the months as three. For now, I just want to increment by one month at a time. I add the one and close the brackets. Notice that my e-date has incremented the date by one month on each date, but it has kept the day of the month as three. If I wanted my top row to always show the first day of the current month, I may need to manipulate my formula a little. Let's see how we can combine the date with my day function. So far we have today as my starting point. Today happens to have already elapsed three days. So to return to the first day of the month, I would need to subtract two days to give me day one. So another way to express that would be to subtract the number of days in this current date. That will take three days off the 3rd of February 2014 effectively taking it back one month because I've taken off all of the days so I need to add one back in. At this point I know that whatever today is I will be subtracting the days off today to always leave me with the first day of the month. It's important to understand that all of these formulas will work well together. The final function to look at in this video is the text formula. The text formula is actually more versatile than just a date formula but we'll look at it in this context as it is particularly useful for dates. When using the text formula, we can effectively force Excel to display any date format that we want, any date format and any number format for that matter. Let's have a look at an example. I can type my equals, type text, open brackets and select my source value. In this situation, I might pick my column of dates here. Next, I type a comma and move on to my second parameter, the format of that text. Let's say I'm looking for a text format that is not easily available from the number formatting drop-down. Perhaps I want something like month, 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 then I want underscore year, 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 year. So the MMM is going to give me an abbreviation of the month, in this example Feb, and year, year, year will give me all four digits of the current year. I can now close my bracket and hit enter. Using the fill down, I can fill down to match the opposite column and see that that formatting is preserved. One feature to be aware of with the text formatting is that it will actually change your date format into a text format. This resulting text here is no longer a serial number, it is in fact a piece of text written with the letters FEB underscore 2014. This may seem counterintuitive, but there are situations where we want to force a text value upon a date format, or any other format. While we're on the subject of text formula, let's have a look at one more example. I can also use text to format a number as a currency or a percentage. So, so for example, I could change the value to 99 and make it a dollar value by forcing the number format, number, two digits, and then I close my formatting. I've now enforced currency formatting on a number and of course this 299 which is static could be replaced with any formula reference. So text format is a very versatile formula which has applications for dates and also currency, percentages and other formats.